Hi everyone, my name is Shayna Hudson. And I'm Aina Castelluccio. And we are doing our presentation on combined spinal and epidural anesthesia. For our objectives, we are going to be going over a case study um, that is related to CSE anesthesia. We're going to be doing an introduction to combined spinal and epidural anesthesia, talking about what it's indicated for, a little history and background on where CSC has come from, different techniques, medication and dosages for CSC, advantages, contraindications, complications and limitations, and anesthetic management of CSC. A 35-year-old Gravita 3 Para 2 at 38 weeks gestation with twins is scheduled for an elective cesarean section. This patient is 5 feet 3 inches tall and she weighs 75 kilos. She has a history of GERD, two previous C-sections, and chronic pain. On examination of her airway, it reveals a grade 3 malampati classification. Her labs and vital signs are within normal range. Considering that this patient has a history of um, C-sections in the past, resulting in additional uterine scar tissue and current twin pregnancy, this procedure might be an ideal procedure for her. But after consulting with the patient and obstetrician, regional anesthesia using combined spinal epidural method is chosen. Combined spinal epidural anesthesia, abbreviated as CSE, includes an initial subarachnoid injection followed by epidural catheter placement and administration of epidural medications. CSE is a more complex technique that requires comprehensive understanding of epidural and spinal physiology and pharmacology. Ultimately, this technique requires a skilled anesthesia provider to perform it effectively. Some of the indications for CSE include labor analgesia and cesarean delivery in those situations where you would anticipate that the procedure is going to take longer than planned, as well as for patients that are at high risk, such as those with cardiac disease, when slower onset of sympathetic blockade is desirable. This uh, procedure is also indi indicated for general surgeries and orthopedic procedures. So CSC anesthesia was first described in 1937 by Dr. Cerisi, an Italian surgeon who injected medications in the subarachnoid and epidural space at the same time. He labeled this procedure episubdural anesthesia, which involved use of the same needle for both the epidural and subarachnoid injection. He first advanced the needle into the epidural space using what is known as the hanging drop technique, which relies upon the aspiration of a small volume of fluid from the hub of the needle as the pressure at the tip decreases below atmospheric level upon entry into the epidural space. At this time, episubdural anesthesia did not involve placement of an epidural catheter either, just two different types of injections within the same single puncture. Dr. Cerisi concluded that in addition to his hanging drop method, he thought that episubdural anesthesia was one of the safest procedures that allowed us to give perfect anesthesia, um, give ideal re relaxation, and eliminated basically all post-op pain and distress. Later, Dr. Kirilaru in 1979 took Cerisi's method a step further and performed the CSE in two different interspaces. First, the epidural would be placed, and then the spinal injection um, is given about two levels below where the epidural catheter was placed. From here, he found several advantages to CSE anesthesia, which included a high-quality anesthesia that could be extended if need be, prolonged post-op analgesia, pain relief that covered a good portion of dermatome levels, few complications with local anesthetic toxicity, and absence of pulmonary problems. The main disadvantages were the need for two lumbar punctures, the extended amount of time needed to perform a double procedure, and trouble finding the subarachnoid space after placing a catheter into the, subdural, into the epidural space. So Dr. Coates in 1982, he introduced what we formerly known as the needle-through-needle -needle technique. 
epidural space is located and then a smaller spinal needle is passed through the epidural needle just beyond the tip until the dural layer is punctured. Here the local anesthetic would first be injected into the subarachnoid space and then the spinal needle is removed and an epidural catheter is placed into the epidural space. So ultimately you get the subarachnoid blockade before epidural catheter placement. Later in 1984, this needle through needle technique was first introduced and brought into obstetric practice. So this technique is actually one of the most widely used CSC techniques in the US. The TUI needle, which has a 30 degree curvature plus a blunted tip of the needle, it minimizes the, it minimizes the risk of dural puncture. So the spinal needle should protrude at least one and a half centimeters beyond the tip of the epidural needle. And the specialized needle through needle or needle beside needle combinations are also available. So the common medications and dosing for combined spinal epidural technique um, is basically the same um, medications and the dosages that we would use when we choose to use spinal and epidural components alone. Uh, for intrathecal, we would use bupivacaine 0.75% um, alone or combined with an opioid of your choice. Um, and for epidural, uh, either bupivacaine 0.125% um, with fentanyl or alone or lidocaine or opivacaine. There are many choices. Now, as combined spinal epidural technique is becoming increasingly popular, it might be an ideal analgesic technique for use during labor. Neuraxial anesthesia for cesarean delivery in general is associated with greater overall maternal safety than with general anesthesia. In addition, neuraxial block is the only form of anesthesia that provides complete analgesia for both stages of labor. The, um, so what would be the advantages? You get a rapid onset, um, estimated about 15 to 20 minutes faster than epidural anesthesia used alone. You get a dense block uh, via intrathecal route. You have a flexibility and duration associated with the continuous epidural technique. It's ideal and late or rapidly progressing labor. It has a very low failure rate, including incomplete or what it's called patchy epidural. You have, you, you have um, less need for supplemental boluses. And it supports ERAS protocol that where the mom would be able to um, use an epidural as a walk-in epidural. Some of the contraindications include fetal distress, severe preeclampsia, severe coagulopathy, untreated bacteremia, aortic stenosis, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, severe cardiomyopathy, and right to left cardiac shunts, which this procedure will make it even worse. The complications and limitations. Um, as with any um, regional anesthesia, the complications are basically the same. You can get an infection, subdural hematoma, postdural puncture headache. There is an increased risk of catheter migrating into the subarachnoid space. Um, there is a fetal bradycardia, which usually resolves within minutes, so it's short-lived, but um, it's good to know that that might happen. Uh, there is a chance for failed spinal or epidural components of combined spinal epidural technique. And the test dose would be an unreliable indicator of the correct epidural catheter placement since the intrathecal injection has already been administered at that point. So the cause of postural puncture headache is um, from CSF leak greater than the rate of CSF production, which causes a drop in volume within the subarachnoid space. This causes traction on the meninges and cerebral vasodilation that can lead to an extremely painful headache or what people describe as one of the worst headaches that they've ever felt. Um, the incidence of postural puncture headache after CSC has many controversial reports that we found. Um, some authors have reported a decreased incidence when compared with epidural alone, and others have reported an increased incidence. Some literature has shown that patients requesting only epidural analgesia 
were almost twice as likely to suffer from an accidental dural puncture. Injection of intrathecal opioid can also decrease the incidence of postural um, puncture headache following CSE technique with subsequent infusion of epidural local anesthetic, which increases the pressure in that subarachnoid space, which therefore would contribute to a lower incidence of um, PDPH or postural puncture headache. Also, the use of a small gauge pencil point needle, such as the Whitaker or Sprott needle, can significantly reduce the incidence of um, PDPH in patients that receive CSE. So the anesthetic management for CSE, you basically are going to apply your monitors, you're going to co-load these patients, give them fluids um, when you're doing this procedure. Then you would place the patient in a sitting position for the CSC and lay them supine with left uterine displacement after putting it in. Um, administering oxygen by mask or nasal cannula. Um, you would continue to monitor the fetal heart rate, which is very important prior to the abdominal prep and throughout um, the procedure. You're going to monitor your blood pressure every minute until stable and then every three, minute, three to five minutes afterwards. Um, you're going to treat hypotension or low blood pressure with further uterine displacement, additional fluids, and vasopressors. And you're going to maintain a blood pressure at baseline levels to optimize placental perfusion. So you're also going to want to be prepared and ready to convert the patient to general anesthesia at any time. Um, and when you place this, just like any spinal or epidural, you're going to want to make sure that you have um, airway equipment nearby in case anything bad happens. Um, you're going to make sure that you have your emergency medications um, and all the appropriate things that you would need in case this procedure went south. So this is just a list of some of the references that we've used um, to create this PowerPoint presentation. And we thank you for listening. Bye.